everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker. I try products out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. And today I am back with a review for the Juice Beauty Stem Cellular CC Cream. Purchased this again because I needed to update the initial review that was on the channel. I wanted to give it another shot. The first time around, didn't like it so much. So has my mind changed? It's very possible. Ready? Here so, we go. So like I mentioned, I purchased this product. No one's paying me to say the following. You're getting my honest review like you always do. If you want to see more of these types of reviews, then don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. The Juice right. Beauty Stem Cellular CC Cream. CC, a bunch of different people call it a bunch of different things, but think of it this way. Color correct, complexion correct, things like that. So it's a little bit different from BBs, CCs, tinted moisturizers. To me, they feel very similar. $39, seven shades available. I mentioned I have this in Desert Glow. The first time I reviewed a warm something, it wasn't this color. It is a 12 in one. It's a lot, it's a lot in one. Multitasking, color correcting cream. Especially beneficial, and this is per the brand, for skin showing signs of aging, including fine lines and wrinkles. SPF 30 with zinc, UVA, UVB protection. In general, the claims are it reduces the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, gives a radiant glowing finish, and evens out and smooths the skin tone. The in-depth scorecard review, if you wanna see all the details on the ratings and the ingredients and all the rest of it, it's back on the site, details on that below. For now, I'm going to go through the pros, the cons, and give you my final verdict for the second time to see if it won me over. Actually, I, I kind of want to start with what I found wrong with it the first time. Very fun and also kind of cringy to watch that video. Uh, I obviously had had a shot of espresso. My energy level was through the roof. What I didn't like about this was I found the formula to be thick and I also said that it didn't provide a lot of coverage. I'm gonna talk about those and the pros and cons now. I did not find this to be thick. I don't know if the formula has shifted since I initially reviewed it. It was a couple of years ago. Man, a lot changes in a couple of years. I did not find this to be thick at all. I found this to be a very lightweight formula that gave sheer to light coverage. I do think it gives a glow. The claim is that it gives you a radiant glow. It's words, it's marketing, but I really found this to fall into that dewy category. It could potentially, I'm getting into the cons a little bit, but if you have oily skin, it might feel oily to you. To me, it was just dewier. The application was really easy. It is a creamy formula. It's not a whipped formula. It's not a gel cream formula. I found this to be a true cream formula. It glided onto the skin nicely. I did see very sheer coverage upon initial application. I wanted to layer it up to see if I could get a little bit more. I expected a little bit more for something that's supposed to be color correcting. So I'm kind of remaining a little bit consistent there, but I'm also giving myself a reality check for what CC creams are supposed to be. So I took the second layer, I built on top, which I thought that might get really oily. I used a sponge and the sponge came in handy. So fingers for the first round, and then I used a sponge on top and I really helped it melt in. That's when the coverage went from sheer to light and I did see an evening out. So because of the dewiness and the high dew factor here, I kind of wanted to tone it down a little bit. So I just took a big fluffy brush and I swiped on a little bit of powder, translucent setting powder. And that seemed to do the trick. It actually played really well with the powder. It wasn't the melt into the skin perfectly upon application. It needed a second. The sponge was needed for me. It wasn't feathery. It wasn't gathering. It needed a little bit of zhuzhing with the sponge. I also went another step and added the Juice Beauty foundation on top of this. They recommend you can add more coverage with their foundation and I actually really loved how that looked. It's currently on my skin now. So it gave me a lot more coverage without feeling heavy and the foundation, I have a full review on that, it's very, very lightweight and it's not oily or greasy. So it kind of was the perfect mixture. There is a scent, it's slightly fruity, very similar to the tinted moisturizer, which I'll talk about in a second. I didn't mind it, I actually really liked it. Of course, the pros of being vegan, cruelty-free, they're looking at sustainable packaging. There's a note on that. I need to dig in and ask them what that's all about because I don't know what FSC means. More on that on the scorecard. Organic ingredients, thermal sunscreen, Yes, yes, and yes. So, truth be told, I have not been outside for long extended amounts of time, but I did like having the SPF coverage. By the end of the day, I did have a couple other products on, but I did not see this smudging, looking ruddy, looking greasy. I think a part of that had to do with the light layer of setting powder. If I did not have that setting powder, I don't think it would look very fresh. It could give a little too much dewiness. A lot of people say it looks oily. I don't feel like this was oily. It was just, 
it gave that shine. Yeah, it could potentially be a con for some skin types. There is coconut oil in here, so some skin types will not like that. However, I was really happy that they did not have any dimethicones or silicones because my skin hates that. Um, the touch test, so after I applied it, it did feel a little bit tacky. That's why I put the powder on top. After I did that, no problems. I don't like that. I'm putting a shirt on, it's gonna get on the shirt and transfer. I usually like it to melt in. It talks about the anti-aging benefits, talks about helping with photo aging and fine lines and wrinkles and all the rest of it. I would need to use this for a prolonged amount of time to do that. This is a personal preference, I've said it before. I don't rely on my makeup to be my main source of skincare. It's sort of a nice to have for me. I know some people really love that you're getting it without having to add more. It's pretty subjective and based on how you approach skincare. And now it's time for the final verdict. Would I recommend this to a friend? Would I buy it again? I don't know if I would buy it again. I don't dislike it this time. My opinion on this has shifted quite a bit. I don't find it to be thick and tacky. I just don't know if I like the finish as much as I like the finish on the tinted moisturizer. Again, this is the personal part of the review. Also, the tinted moisturizer does have a little bit of a white cast. Both have SPF 30, but I found this to have a little bit of a white cast, so that might be a turnoff for some skin types. I love how it gives a luminous finish. I feel like this is a luminous, lit from within finish. You get color correction here through the luminosity that it gives to the skin. It's a little bit of a trick to the eye. You get color correction on the color corrector, duh, the CC cream, because of the tint in here. I feel like that's where this is going. That's what this is about. So it's going to be applying color on. This is going to be luminosity, so it kind of shifts and makes your skin look more even out, if that makes sense. Figured the question would come up, so I wanted to include it. So yeah, at the end of the day, I don't think I would buy this again only because I really like this, not because it failed me miserably. I think it did a good job. I do think it gives sheer coverage. I would always have to build it personally because I have redness, so take that into consideration if you're trying to get rid of the redness. You could apply a concealer on top, but if you're looking for a one and done sheer coverage with SPF, that smells lovely, has really great ingredients, and you're okay with coconut oil, this could be a fantastic option for you. Also, it's a really, really solid mixer with a fuller coverage foundation that is lightweight. And that's all I have for this update. I'm really glad I retested it because I totally changed my mind. Well, not totally. The formula's not bad. I figured out how to give myself the coverage I was looking for. It's just, I really so that's the review the full scorecard final scores back on the site if you want to check it out with ingredients and stuff it's over there what do you think are you gonna try this have you tried it do you like it all the things tell me all the things thank you so much for watching i hope you found this review helpful if you did make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel i'm gonna go put this way and test out some more products i will be right back here with some more reviews until then in the hair being weird hair being weird today testing Testing, one, two, one, two. Can you see, see me? Get it? Oh, oh, that's terrible. That was bad.